welcome to this uh, module of industrial hygiene. So, up till now we have studied about the identification and evaluation tools. In this particular module, we will discuss the various methodologies applicable for different type of toxic hazard, evaluation of toxic hazards, etc. So, just have a look that what we have studied in the last modules, we have gone through that what is the industrial hygiene, what was the history, there are some governmental regulations and abbreviations, what are the steps involved in industrial hygiene. We have gone through the material safety data sheet, performed the evaluation study so that we can analyze that what is the gravity of uh, uh, toxic substance, those who are released at the workplace. We have discussed about the various threshold limit values and other parameters through which you can assess the gravity of those toxic release at workplace. In this particular module, we will discuss and briefly we have uh, gone through these uh, control methodologies in the last module. Again, I am coming back to uh, the control modules. These control modules are divided into two different aspects. One is the environmental control and second one is the personal protection. So, environmental control, they reduces the exposure by reducing the concentration of toxic in the workplace environment. They include the substitution isolation which we have gone through in the last module, enclosure, different type of ventilation tools, etc. The personal protective uh, pro protection involves the prevention or reduction of exposure by providing the barrier between the worker and a workplace exposure. This barrier is usually worn by the worker, so it is designated as a personal word. Now, in this particular table, we are having the different type of uh, control tools or controls, control methodology available and what are the typical uh, techniques available for those control methodologies. These are the general examples like we may have enclosure that is enclosed room or equipment and a place under the negative pressure. So, typical techniques they are enclosed hazardous operation such as sample point sometimes seal room, sewer, ventilation. You may use the analyzer and instruments to observe inside equipments, shield high temperature surface, pneumatically con convey dusty materials, etc. There are certain wet methods. Use wet methods to minimize the contamination with dust. The typical technique involve are clean vessel chemically versus uh, uh, sandblasting. Use water sprays for cleaning so that the dust may get deposited. Clean area frequently, good housekeeping. Use water spray to shield the trenches or pump seals. Another is the local ventilation. This contains the exhaust of hazardous substance. We will discuss these local and dilution ventilation in due course of time in this particular module. The typical techniques are use properly designed hoods. Use hoods for charging and discharging. You may use the ventilation at drumming section use local exhaust at sample points, you may keep exhaust system under negative pressure, etc. The dilution ventilation, the design ventilation system to control the low toxic level. So, that I mean this, this is with the help of certain diluents may be inert or may be air. So, design locker rooms with a good ventilation and a special area or enclosure for contaminated uh, clothing. Design ventilation to isolate a operation from rooms and offices, design filter press rooms with directional ventilation. You may go for a good housekeeping, so keep toxic and, and dust uh, uh, contaminated away from your workplace. You may use dikes around the tanks and pumps, provide water and steam connection for area washing, provide lines for flushing and cleaning. You may provide well designed sewer system with emergency. You may use the personal protection. This is the last line of uh, defense. Uh, use safety glasses um, and free shields. Use apron, arm shields and space suits. Wear appropriate respirators, airline respirators they are required. So, when oxygen concentration is less than 19.5 percent, 19.5 percent is called IDLH. Um, immediate death when the oxygen concentration is below this particular concentration. This is the last, not time, this is the last line of defense. 
based on the gravity of the toxic substance, various protective gears are available like hard hats usually protect head from falling equipments and bumps, safety glasses usually the impact resistant lenses, chemical splash, goggle, gas tights, etc. suitable for liquid and fumes, steel toed safety shoes protect against dro uh, dropped equipment, wrap around face shields like this. This protect um, uh, usually made of fiberglass and resistant to most of the chemicals. Splash suits, vuitton or butyl rubber for non-flammable exposures. Vinyl aprons resist most uh, chemicals. Umbilical cord suits used with the external air supply. Rubber over sleeves, these usually protect uh, forearms. PVC coated gloves resist acid and bases. PVC and nitrile knee boots, they resist acid, oil and greases, earplugs protect against the high noise level. So basically these are the barrier from toxic substance to yourself. Now we will discuss something about the respirator because this is uh, you can say the last uh, line of defense or it provides the barrier. Remember these respirators to be used very carefully. And you can see in this particular figure that uh, this uh, uh, prevents the contamination of uh, toxic vapors uh, uh, through inhalation to the body system. And these respirators are of so many types, uh, types. you can see there are a couple of uh, in this particular figure. Now uh, there are certain advantages and certain disadvantages associated with the respirators because uh, and we are going to discuss all those things in the subsequent slides. And respirators uh, should only be used on temporary basis until regular control methods can be implemented. So whenever you are using the respirators then definitely the level of contamination or level of exposure is on the higher side and it crosses or the workers or the person those who are in and around they are overexposed. So it should be used as a temporary basis because ultimate attempt should be there to control the emission of that particular toxic substance. Used as emergency equipment to ensure worker safety in the event of accident. This is the last resort in the event of the environmental control technique are unable to provide the satisfactory protection because the human life is first. So uh, one major uh, disadvantage associated with the use of the respirator is that a worker with a respirator is unable to perform or respond as well as a worker without one. So respirator always compromise uh, workers ability. So that is why we must emphasize that you must uh, implement the regular control method so that uh, the, uh, the normal condition or the toxic substance release can be lower compared to the acceptable limit. There are various types of uh, respirators or a covering available as on date. Now this one is like quarter mask, this is filled, this one, this is the half mask filled at the nose etc. This is the full face piece, sometimes the toxic substance they are irritating to the skin also. So or itching, they may, uh, they may impart itching to eyes. So you can use the full face piece. There are mouthpiece and nose clamps, uh, not very common but uh, still people are using. Sometimes the toxic substance is extremely reactive. So there are different type of loose fitting coverings. These are the, the part and part, this may be the part and parcel of full uh, suit, full body suit or full face suit. So this one is the hood, sometimes the helmet being used for the protection. These are the loose fitting face pieces and this is the full body suit. So based on your requirement uh, you can use because ultimately the efficiency of worker is always challenged whenever you are using this type of respirators. Sometimes uh, these respirators uh, they are filled with certain type of uh, attachments like filter, chemical canisters, chemical cartridge etc. So this is purely based on the toxic substance uh, released at the workplace. Now usual way is to use the filter. 
because whenever the suspended particles on the higher side, so it is advisable to use filter along with the respirator. So a component, what is the uh, filter? A component used in respirator to remove solid or liquid aerosol from the inspired air. This is called also called the purifying element. So you can see this one, the, the white or light colored thing is filter. These are very common. So, whenever you are crossing the traffic or if the particulate matter is on the higher side, then uh, you may find the people, uh, people are using these type of filter along with the respirators. There are certain canisters or cartridges. They are situated in between like this or the canister is attached to this one. So, basic purpose of this uh, uh, chemical based canister or cartridge is to uh, have uh, an absorbing or absorbing ability of uh, toxic substance. And sometimes if filter fails to provide the adequate uh, safety or adequate protection, then these canisters being used or um, cartridges being used to neutralize the effect of uh, that toxic substance. So, usually a canister or cartridge, a container with a filter, sorbent or catalyst or combination of these items which remove a specific contamination and, uh, from the air passed through the container. There are certain air purifying respirators like this, you can see that these are the air purifying devices. So, a respirator with an air purifying filter cartridge or canister that removes the specific air contaminants by passing ambient air through the air purifying element. It may be a chemical, it may not be, it may be some physical device. Uh, when you are um, in such a scenario, when the toxic, the, the toxicity of any particular chemical is on the higher side, then there are certain self-contained breathing apparatus. Usually, uh, this uh, an atmosphere supplying respirator for which the breathing air source is designed to be carried by the user. So, you can see that uh, this is the oxygen canister, it is at the uh, rear part of the body and this is applicable when the environment is smoky, when the environment is extremely filled with the toxic substance, so that uh, even there is no, uh, no opportunity to have a purified air with the, or your regular respirators, they do fail. There are certain oxygen deficient environments. So, usually in uh, engineering term, an atmosphere with an oxygen content below 19.5 percent by volume is uh, terms, term as, as oxygen deficient atmosphere. So, all oxygen deficient atmosphere are considered as LD, uh, sorry, ID, LH, immediately dangerous to life or health. So, it should be well publicized and it is always advisable to use SCB or SCBA under these circumstances. So, these are the respirators for um, ID, LH atmosphere. You may use the full phase piece pressure demand SCBA certified by an IOSH for minimum service life of 30 minutes that is based on the, uh, the capacity of the cylinders. You may, use, you may use a combination of full phase piece pressure demand SAR with auxiliary self-contained air supply apparatus. So, based on your requirement and based on the concentration, you may use any one of them. Now, next aspect is uh, the ventilation. Usually, ventilation is uh, one of the most powerful and most popular tool for decontaminating any workplace if the, the workplace is contaminated by the toxic substance. So, for environmental control of uh, airborne toxic material, the most common method is the choice is ventilation. Now, ventilation is of so many type. Now, ventilation is added benefit. These benefits are can quickly remove the dangerous concentration of flammable and toxic material from workplace. It can be highly localized, reducing the quantity of air moved and equipment size. Suppose I am working over here. So, you can localize, you can direct, uh, you can have the directional ventilation tool so that it can snatch away the toxic substance from the workplace. So, there is no need to install the, the costly ventilation equipment uh, throughout your workplace. Uh, these equipments, these ventilating equipments, um, they are readily available. 
Uh, it can be even you can find it your at your kitchen when the ventilation fan is there or sometimes the chimney, electrical chimney is there. It's uh, very easy to install any kind of uh, ventilation equipment and the equipment, uh, uh, these ventilation equipment can be added to the existing fa uh, facility as smartly as possible. But the one major disadvantage associated with the ventilation and that is the operating cost because they are highly energy intensive. So, substantial electrical energy may be required to drive the potentially large fans and the cost to heat or cool the large quantity of fresh air. So, because of these, these factors, they do possess a heavy cost. Even if, uh, if you consider an example of your kitchen, whenever you are using ventilation fan or whenever you are using the, the kitchen chimney, then definitely the cost is on the higher side. One is the installation cost and second one is the operating electrical cost. So, you cannot overlook the, these, these particular factors. So, they, but sometimes uh, these, the investment to these expenditure is uh, fruitful because your entire working environment is uh, safe. So, these operating costs need to be considered when you are having, uh, you, when you are evaluating certain alternatives. The best thing is that to minimize the evolution. But if you are not able to find out, like if you are cooking something in your kitchen, then you cannot avoid the formation of, of orders. Then definitely you are compelled to use these kind of ventilating tools. Now, ventilation is based on two principles. Dilute the contaminants below the target concentration. So, you have, you are having the TLVs with you. So, you dilute the contaminants below the target um, uh, concentration and remove the contaminants before workers are exposed. So, these two are the basic principles on which the ventilation theory runs. Usually, ventilation systems, they are composed of fans and ducts. The best system is the negative pressure system with the fans located at the exhaust end of the system pulling air out. Now, based on all the theories applicable, technically we can divide the ventilation techniques in two aspects, local and dilution ventilation. The most common example of local ventilation is the hood. We will discuss the hood in subsequent slides. Now, usually a hood is a device that either completely encloses the source of contaminant and or moves the air in such a fashion to carry the contaminants to an exhaust device. Now, based on the requirement, there are four different type of hoods. The enclosed hood that completely contains the source of contaminants. Now, suppose this particular segment is covered with this one. So, anything which is running inside is being sucked out by the ventilation tool. Nothing is coming out. So, that is called the enclosed hood. I will show the figure. The exterior hood that continuously draws the contaminants into an exhaust from some distance away. The receiving hood, this is an exterior type of hood that uses the discharge motion of the contaminant for collection. Usually, it uh, utilizes the natural draft of uh, um, toxic substance or fumes or dust, etc. The push and pull type of hood, they uses a stream of air from a supply to push contaminants towards the an exhaust system. The most common example of an enclosed hood is the laboratory hood. Another type of hood is the bypass hood. Now, for these design, bypass air is supplied through the grill at the tile top of the hood. This ensures the availability of fresh air to sweep out the contaminants in the hood. So, not only uh, it provides a dilution, but also it is performing the push and pull type of activity. Now, the, this is uh, the typical industrial local exhaust ventilation system. Local exhaust ventilation system, you can see these are the ventilation devices and you may require here the ventilation tool and some uh, somewhere here. Now, this is the general feature of uh, local ventilation system. This is the hood 
and some of the contaminants or the fumes may be discharged from this port being collected by the negative pressure through this hood. You may install an air cleaner over here so that any kind of suspended particles, any kind of particles can be entrapped and it is composed of fan so that it can be discharged through duct to the either atmosphere or sometimes if the toxic substance are there then it may be uh, 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 an scrubber may be installed at this port so that uh, the all toxic vapors or fumes may, no, may not go to uh, the atmosphere otherwise it will create the problem for the nearby people. The general consideration of uh, this ventilation is that you are having a contaminant cloud, you must identify the source, where is the speed and the direction, both the things are important because you must know that what is the evolution rate and in which direction it is going down. See uh, uh, the Bhopal gas tragedy took place just because of uh, this directional effect. The MIC release, the, uh, the wind inversion at the time of MIC release was uh, populated towards the population zone. So, the direction of the toxic substance uh, release is important. Then you must analyze that what is your work process requirement, that is how much amount of enclosure you require. Sometimes uh, if uh, the, your working place is small, then there is no need to design the things for uh, larger size. The reason is that whenever you are designing for a larger, a larger area, then definitely the energy consideration would be on the higher side. So, in case uh, if this particular thing fails, then again you redesign the process for the best use of local exhaust ventilation. Then you must see that uh, what is the operator requirement. You match the hood to um, the way the work is carried out. There are n number of hoods are available, there are n number of uh, uh, ventilation devices available based on these two principles. So, you must know that what kind of uh, operator is required for your specific local exhaust ventilation system. Then based on these factor, you may have your local exhaust ventilation hood, maybe different type, size. And so, based on your requirement. So, this is the general consideration while selecting for exhaust ventilation system. Now, these are the various type of uh, local exhaust ventilation hood. Now, this is the local hood. Here you are performing something, maybe dust particles they are being generated at uh, this source. It is being sucked away by this um, uh, uh, local ventilation tool. This is the downdraft of uh, downdraft type of hood you are performing something at this particular point and the dust particles or a toxic substance they are being generated and sometimes it is not possible to, to snatch away these dust particles from the top of the, the reactor or top of the process then you may utilize the downdraft uh, aspect. This is the side hood, so you are having uh, some processes going on here and if uh, something uh, hazardous is coming out then you may install the hood and this can be discharged the contaminants to the atmosphere or to the some other safe places. This is uh, the typical design of uh, enclosed hood. I will discuss in the next slide because this is the most common uh, type of uh, hood. This is the booth hood. hood. Here the something is going on like this. I, this is my working place uh, and somehow because of the space consideration, because of the, the process requirement, uh, I cannot install the hood just uh, above this uh, uh, particular workplace. So, it may have some side, uh, 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 side type of snatching uh, device. So, this is uh, the booth type of hood. This is the regular or you can say the conventional type of canopy hood. This is workplace is just above, you may have a canopy type of uh, hood which may utilize the uh, either uh, the force uh, um, convection or a natural convection through which the, the, um, uh, the contaminants may get in, uh, snatched away at this port. This is the capture mobile type of hood and uh, it is again very popular in uh, some of the industry and uh, you can use uh, uh, this particular type of hood uh, 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 or local exhaust ventilation system anywhere. 
because suppose I am working over here and sometimes because of some batch preparation I may need to go to some other place. So, I can, uh, I can uh, snatch the dusty particles or toxic substance through the flexible hose from anywhere else. So, this is the flexible hose through which you can snatch away, you can completely remove the uh, toxic substance from the mobile workplace. Now, these are the three uh, basic LEVs which we have discussed and uh, moreover the design consideration, how the design consideration plays a vital role we will discuss in this particular slide. Now, this is uh, the enclosed type of hood which we had, uh, dis we had uh, dis we, we discussed in the previous slide. Now, you can see uh, that this uh, particular hood completely enclosed the workplace. So, any kind of contaminants which is being released from this place, they are housed within this enclosed uh, chamber and it can be go away from this place. Now, this uh, particular capturing type of hood or sometimes you may refer to as a mobile hood or captured hood etcetera. Now, one is important feature at this uh, particular uh, to this particular type of hood is that you must know the, the fluid behavior or you must know the flow profile of uh, the toxic substance or a fumes from uh, at your workplace. So, that you can design these uh, capturing type of hood in such a way it, so that it can snatch away all the fumes, all the dust to this level. So, it all depends that whenever you, you, you know the flow pattern of these uh, fumes, only then you can set the power of uh, suction of this particular re, um, capturing hood and opening of this particular hood, so that it can snatch away all the uh, that undesired contaminants from the workplace. These are the again the typical example of uh, um, LEV or local exhaust ventilation hoods. These one is the enclosed hood. Sometimes you may find the uh, uh, gloves inside, so that any part of the body will not be get contaminated to the toxic environment. These are the some partially large hoods, partially small hoods like this you can see. They are enclosed uh, ventilated rooms or a hood type of things, so that uh, you can snatch away all the uh, uh, contaminants from uh, anything. This is the natural receiving hood etcetera. Now, main reason we must understand sometimes uh, these uh, ventilation tools do fail. Now, why do they do fail? There are certain reasons associated with it like incorrect type of hood is chosen and could never provide the sufficient protection. Now, sometimes uh, because of uh, uh, because you do not have any idea about uh, the flow pattern of uh, fumes uh, or toxic substance, you have chosen the incorrect type of uh, hood, then definitely it will fail. Sometimes when the enclosed hood is required and you have chosen the mobile type of hood, then again it will fail. The airborne uh, con contaminants is not contained or captured. Again, if you have not much knowledge about those airborne contaminants, then definitely your ventilation tool will be failed. LEV hood design does not match the process and source. So, definitely because in the previous slides, we have discussed so many types of LEVs. So, if you are not able to, to install the proper designed LEV hood, then definitely it will fail. Now, see I am um, giving a couple of example here uh, you may see that these fumes or dust are being generated. So, you, you may utilize the, the, uh, the local exhaust ventilation or a mobile capturing unit. You can see that this, this is being snatched away by this local exhaust tool. Similarly, here the person is uh, uh, generating a lot of dust. So, it may require the local exhaust uh, uh, ventilation tool. Sometimes, if it is being toxic, then definitely you may utilize the dilution ventilation also. Sometimes, you may experience uh, the insufficient air flow because uh, you may need to decontaminate the, the workplace as well as you may need 
to dilute the the workplace exposure and for this uh, you may not have a ins, uh, sufficient air supply in that particular case uh, your ventilation system will fail now as i discussed uh, because uh, whenever you are having uh, this type of uh, uh, different type of uh, vent, uh, ventilation tool then you must know the pattern remember these pattern governs with two factor one is the rate of generation and second is that what is the power being employed to suck it out now if the, this power is insufficient then definitely the dust particles or the fumes may go out and it may contaminate the workplace so be sure that you are using the sufficient powered ventilation as well as you are practically aware of that what kind of uh, um, material it is and what is the flow pattern and if it requires then definitely you may, you may use the natural draft ventilation tool these are the other examples of capturing hoods the process source and contaminant clouds the air are outside the hood then hood has to generate sufficient air flow at and around the source to capture and draw the contaminants laden air now uh, while capturing hood they are there are certain interrelated properties uh, they must have adequate capturing velocity they must be properly placed at a, uh, at a sufficient distance and a zone the process induced air movement and draught must be well defined air flow velocity counters and flanges these are the various counters if you see these are the various air flow counters it may it has it must be well defined uh, you must know that where you can have the different type of bubbles and you need to capture those bubbles adequately you must form the capture curves prior, a priori before using any kind of uh, ventilation technique now this is again the the uh, uh, typical problem this is the the problem of evaporation and you can see the different uh, um, type of uh, uh, evaporating vapors uh, vapors these are the profiles of those evaporating vapors so here uh, because of the variety of reasons you cannot use the over enclosed hood then you may use the mobile or a zonal zonal hood for uh, to capture uh, the vapors being generated sometimes these vapors are, are uh, uh, flammable in nature they may form uh, the flammable mixture so in the previous modules we have discussed the the uh, the um, uh, lower flammability and upper flammability limit so they may capture uh, this thing and uh, uh, it may create a fire hazard to uh, anywhere so be aware about uh, mm, uh, this type of scenario now whenever uh, uh, again one more thing is that which uh, we have discussed in uh, the evaluation module sorry uh, in this evaluation module uh, we have discussed the vessel filling operation now whenever this vessel is being filled uh, you may see the two type of effect one is uh, the rate of evaporation of uh, Uh, that particular substance another one is the rate of uh, movement of those vapors uh, to the upper part so in the last module we have discussed that uh, it is uh, dominated by the area in question vessel filling operation etc so based on the concentration at this juncture the air velocity uh, must be properly calculated and air velocity you may require to put uh, some additional air velocity at this uh, level to capture the vapor laden air so remember again if you are handling with the flammable vapor then it may create a future problem like uh, fire etc the last uh, segment of uh, this particular module is uh, dilution ventilation so if uh, the contaminant cannot be placed in a hood and must be used in an open area or a room so you have to use the dilution ventilation now unlike uh, hood ventilation where the air flow prevents worker exposure dilution ventilation always exposes the worker but in amount diluted by the fresh air 
So it is just like that I am working at this bench and some toxic vapors or flammable vapors they are coming out from my, uh, my pool. Then continuously some ex by through external air supply, we, I am diluting those uh, 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 generated vapors below the TLV or below the LFL etc. So, dilution ventilation uh, this always requires more airflow than the local ventilation. So, you may experience that uh, operating expenses uh, these can be substantial. Now, for exposure to multiple sources, uh, the dilution air requirement is uh, computed for each individual source because uh, the rate of evaluation, rate of displacement may be different. The total dilution requirement usually is the sum of uh, individual dilution requirement. Now, restrictions should be considered before implementing the dilution ventilation that contaminant must not be very highly to toxic because it is not removing, remember it is not removing the toxic substance from your workplace. Only thing is that it is keeping the concentration of those toxicant low. So, your workers are definitely they, those are in uh, continuously exposed to those toxic vapor. So, that is why the contaminant must not be highly toxic. Contaminant must be evolved at a uniform rate. The reason is that if there is any variation in the, um, uh, uh, the evolution rate, then definitely the air supply or inert supply is changed frequently. So, if the rate is on the higher side, then definitely you may need to put more air supply and if uh, the evaluation rate is sometimes decreased, then you need to put off the air because ultimately whenever you are supplying excess air, then definitely it is of no use and unnecessary you are putting more energy towards the, the flow of that air supply. Worker must remain uh, at a suitable distance uh, from the source to ensure proper dilution of the contaminants. So, that has to be ensured because uh, uh, the concentration may vary accordingly. Suppose, I am just putting my head over there, then definitely the concentration would be on the higher side compared to if I am away from that workplace. So, so in this particular module, uh, we have discussed uh, the various uh, ventilation tools, various control measures uh, applied at uh, uh, workplace. And in this particular uh, segment, uh, we have discussed the industrial, all aspect of uh, industrial hygiene, right from identification to the quantification in terms of evaluation and then how do we control it. Thank you very much.